one of the ways to protect as an investor if you're worried about inflation and slower growth is to have some precious metal exposure. Hello, Lorne, and uh, thank you for joining Duke Scobby TV today. It's an absolute pleasure. We're going to focus a bit on uh, precious metals and emerging markets. So first off, let's start with metals. And uh, what can we expect to see next? Well, thank you for having me. Well, it's quite interesting at the moment. Um, we like to look at silver um, over uh, gold. The reason for that is it, it tends to move quite a lot more. Um, if you look at silver on this chart, you can see that it's been on an upward trend now for over a year. Um, the yellow line is the 200-day uh, moving average. Silver's been uh, doing very well, particularly since the beginning of the year. Um, actually, had we had this interview a couple of days ago, I was going to tell you that it was getting overbought above about $18 uh, to the ounce. But in fact, it, it corrected overnight quite steeply. So that, that, that's in line with what we thought. If you look at it now, it, it's tracking down to a, a, a more uh, fair value on a, on a technical side. Um, and we think probably uh, if it reaches about 1750, then that would be a buying opportunity. And that's short term. Um, I'd probably like to cover a bit more about the longer term fundamentals and why you'd be buying precious metals right now. So why, why bullish metals at this moment in time? Well, I think that um, it's, it's an overall commodity story, in mm -hmm. fact. Um, so both precious metals and industrial metals are, are very interesting. Um, if you move on to the, the overall metal spectrum, you'll see that they've been doing quite well since the beginning of the year. Um, this is a chart of all of the uh, metals from the base metals and the precious metals. You can see on the uh, penultimate right column there yeah. that year to date they're doing quite well. It's really the uh, commodities that have got a, a, a use um, in industry as well as a reaction to inflation and the dollar. So looking at the industrial metals there you can see some of them have really uh, performed very well. Uh, palladium of course is used in a lot of uh, instruments as well as silver um, and they've outperformed uh, gold which is why I think it's interesting to focus on those. Overall, uh, the combination of coming up from a very low base after five years of uh, very poor markets for commodities, the possibility that the dollar is also getting towards its peak uh, is, at the moment, I would say, getting close to a tipping point. We can talk about the dollar more in a second. Um, the, the final point is that inflation has started to rear its head. And there's a bit of a concern that maybe uh, the global economy won't keep up with the rate of inflation and in some areas inflation's already started to move ahead of a, uh, the expected cycle and so one of the ways to protect as an investor if you're worried about inflation and slower growth is to have some precious metal exposure. So you mentioned the dollar, yeah, let's, let's talk a little bit about the dollar now, what, what from your perspective uh, is happening? Well I think if we have a look at the uh, DXY uh, dollar basket chart there, you'll see that the dollar has had a, a, a pretty spectacular run uh, since middle of 2014. Of course, that's really getting, uh, the market was getting itself prepared for a tightening of um, monetary policy by the Fed and markets quite often move ahead of the actual event. So we've seen the rate rises uh, coming now and, and we're looking at probably the next rate rise in a month or two. Certainly the rhetoric coming out of the Fed officials says that there could be another one. There's argument as to whether there should be a bit more of a wait and see approach. But if you look at unemployment, it's, it's now reached what could probably be regarded as optimal. The economy in the US is doing very well. And the risks outside the US economy, such as China slowing down, mm -hmm. appear to have dissipated. So it does look like there could be more rate rises. Now that has driven the dollar all the way up to the level where it is now. Um, the question is, how much further will it go? And what is happening in the rest of the world? If the rest of the world is starting to catch up, and we start seeing talk perhaps in Europe uh, of the ECB ending quantitative easing and starting to look a little bit more hawkish as well, then perhaps the dollar might be reaching its peak. And actually, typically, in studies over the last five decades, the dollar typically peaks after the second rate rise. Now, I'm not going to follow history slavishly every time, but it does look on this graph like we could be reaching uh, a, a very high level quite soon. It could go a bit further. But if it starts to come off, that's really going to start to benefit a number of asset classes, industrial metals, precious metals, and emerging markets. So you mentioned emerging markets there. Let's move on to look at emerging markets. They've been extremely bullish as, as of late. Do you expect to see this like, trend, trend to continue? Well, 
EM is a, is a, is a very broad spectrum. So, mm -hmm. in fact, there's going to be some bifurcation within the EM yeah. uh, sector. There are a number of countries that are, are doing pretty well. Um, uh, Russia and China are doing much better, and the worries over China slowing down have dissipated quite a lot. The growth rate looks like it'll probably be about 6.7% this year, and that, that's pretty good. With the oil price now uh, well above 50, there's uh, much better fundamentals for Russia. Um, coming from a, a, a pretty pretty low base as well. On the other hand, uh, Brazil and Argentina are looking very weak, and Turkey, um, which benefits a lot from uh, tourism, has, has had uh, a significant downturn. So there is, there is good and bad within EM, but overall, the picture is looking better. Um, the IMF is forecasting for gentle acceleration in global growth with risks to the downside, but also risks to the upside that some of the, the policies by Trump, some, some of the, the fiscal easing that might be, might be coming through may actually give a, a shot in the arm to the global economy and global markets. So if we look at the Emerging Markets Index, and this is again is, is a relative strength indicator, which is quite helpful for for the trading and, and where to get in. You can see that the 200 day moving average, the yellow line, is moving in, in, in a relatively smooth direction. You can see again in January and February, a strong performance by EM uh, equities has driven it, if you look at the, the baseline margin there, has driven it uh, to uh, overbought status. And in fact, there was a slight correction uh, over the last couple of days, which has brought it back down into the right level. Probably a little bit more weakness um, would give investors a reason to, to buy in. I think overall the price earnings valuation for emerging markets is quite cheap at about 12 and a half times forward earnings for the next year. There is a, a yield of about 2.75% from dividends. Price to book is about 1.44. Now that is relatively cheap when you're looking at emerging markets which are typically a growth engine uh, for stocks. If you compare that with where money might be deployed in equities, look at the uh, developed world. So look at the um, MSCI world um, statistics. Um, that's trading on a forward earnings of about 16.7. So quite a lot more expensive. Now, not necessarily overvalued if the world is accelerating. Therefore, a balance between emerging and developed market stocks would be interesting. But the yield is lower than emerging markets, which is uh, uh, interesting point to note, and the price to book is 2.16. So, in, in general, uh, DM is more expensive than EM. Don't go overboard and, and put the whole uh, uh, thing into, into one basket. Be diversified. But I certainly think it's interesting to be moderately overweight emerging market equities. Of course, if we go back to the dollar, if the dollar gets at all peaky and starts to come off a bit against emerging market currencies, that's a tailwind for your stocks as well. Yeah. Lorne, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for watching. And if you like this video and would like to see more, head over to ducoscopy.tv.